Welcome to our lecture online. As we saw in the previous video, they discovered that 3C273, the 273rd quasar placed in the third Cambridge catalog, had a recession velocity that was absolutely phenomenal. The redshift was 15.8%, resulting in a speed, as it was moving away from us, at 47,400 kilometers per second. There's no way that could be a star. Now, since we knew the Hubble relationship, the Hubble law, and the Hubble constant, what would happen if we plugged it into this concept? So here we have the Hubble diagram, where we have the Hubble constant, which is the slope of this line, and the relationship between the velocity at which things move away from us, and how far they must be away from us. And by then, we had a fairly good, I wouldn't say accurate, but a fairly decent estimate for the Hubble constant, let's say that we take a Hubble constant at 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Well, we place that in our equation that the velocity is equal to the Hubble constant times d, kind of like the y equals mx plus b equation. We solve that equation for d, we take the velocity divided by the Hubble constant, and we get the distance to the object in megaparsec. And it turned out that 3C273 was at a distance of about 650 megaparsecs, and since one parsec is 3.26 light years, that equated to a distance of about 2.1 billion light years. That was absolutely phenomenal. That was one of the farthest objects ever discovered. So we were looking at an object that was extremely far away, over 2 billion light years. And then we began to realize, well, wait a minute, we're seeing some fairly strong radio signals, but if it comes from an object that's 2.1 billion light years away, those radio signals must be bigger than anything we've ever seen before. So they began to realize there was something very, very strange regarding these quasars. They weren't quasars, really. They weren't stellar-like objects. There was something else, something much bigger than that, much farther, much more powerful. And then we measured 3C48, and we began to realize that the shift of those lines was even much more pronounced than it was for 3C273. Those lines had been shifted by 37%. Now we're beginning to see speeds that are more than one-third the speed of light. And so, of course, now we had to take into account the relativistic effect, because things were moving so fast. So we equated that the velocity was about 100,000 kilometers per second. That object that we're looking at that was beaming very powerful radio signals to us, was moving away from us at about one-third the speed of light. We equated that to the distance, again using the Hubble law. We found that that was about 1,400 megaparsecs away, or about 4.6 billion light years. Imagine that, almost 5 billion light years away. And those were very powerful radio signals from 5 billion light years. And remember that the intensity of any signal that we see, well, I shouldn't put an equal sign there, I should put a proportionality sign there, but the intensity of any signal is proportional to 1 over the distance squared. So now if we plug in this enormous distance and we square that, 1 divided by this enormous distance squared should be a tiny, tiny number. The signals from galaxies that far away should barely be noticeable. We should be able, barely be able to detect them. But since they were that powerful, and they were coming from that far away, well, they had to be very powerful to begin with, coming from the source. We had no idea what we're looking at, but we're beginning to see that quasars were something very, very special, something very unique in the universe, and at that point, we had no idea yet what it was. We just realized they were very far away, they were moving very fast away from us, and they were putting out enormous amount of energy. Wow. So let's go to our next video and really see how much energy we're actually talking about. That's not a proportional sign, it's the alpha. Oh, thank you. It's always good to have a mathematician in the family. <laughs> um, back in the 1950s, what was the Hubble constant back then? It bounced around. Remember that initially it was pretty high, and back in the 1950s it started coming down pretty quick. And they were getting down to below 100 kilometers per second yeah, per mega per sec. No, it wasn't. But by the 1960s, they were in that range. But that's a good question because it did bounce around. So we're, we're picking a number that gave us these numbers here. But you know, they weren't sure about the. They just knew they were somewhere very far away. 
Maybe it was 2.5 billion, maybe it was 1.8 billion, but you're right, it wasn't those exact numbers per se at the time. Good. Oh, that's not the, so that's not a number they got. It depends who was doing the calculation of what Hubble constant they were using at the moment, because it was changing almost you know, weekly or monthly. Yeah, you're right. The Hubble constant is something that's been changing a lot. 